Well, good evening and a very warm welcome to you to Night Prayer on this Thursday, the 21st of January from St Andrew's Church, Hortonleskern in Darlington in the northeast of England. It's good that you're able to share with us. And tonight we're using the uh, daily, daily prayer, using night prayer from daily prayer from the Church of England. And hopefully you found the link if you, if you need it um, on our Facebook page and you can, use, you can uh, click on that and we'll be able to uh, join in together. Uh, our readings tonight are from, uh, first of all, we're reading from Psalm 40 and we're looking at verses 7 to 10 and then verse 17. And then we're also going to read from Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 through to chapter 8, verse 6. And finally, we're looking at Mark chapter 3, verses 7 to 12. So hopefully you'll have those ready either in your Bibles or you'll be able to uh, look them up on um, your tablet or phone, wherever you've got the, the Bible readings. But as we come together today, after what, or well, certainly in, in Darlington has been um, quite a, a, a nice day with lots of sunshine, but also quite cold. Uh, we come to today to give this day to God and to offer him all that we are this night. So we begin by just having a moment of, of quietness, um, just to reflect on this day. I'll begin by starting with a, a verse from chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 33, and then we'll just um, enter into a time of quietness after the opening sentences. So the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. Isn't that wonderful to have that comfort to know that God is with us. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And we say together, who made heaven and earth. So just a few seconds just to reflect on this day, to allow our thoughts our bodies and all that we are to rest in God's presence. And we say together, save us, O Lord, while waking and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. I find that uh, short prayer very, very comforting. And it's certainly one thing which I was encouraged to do um, really from a young age that as we come to the end of the day and particularly as we go to sleep, just to commit the day and to commit ourselves into God's hands and to rest in him. So let's look at our Psalm, which um, as I said, it's Psalm 40, and we're reading um, from verse 7 through to 10, and then finally verse 17. So this is a lovely psalm. It uh, starts all about the beginning of the psalm about us waiting patiently for God and him restoring us, lifting us from the slimy pit it talks about in the first couple of verses. So then the psalmist goes on in verse 7 to say, then I said, here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not seal your, my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. And then finally in verse 17, but as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God, do not delay. And let's say the glory together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever, amen. So the Psalmist there, reminding God or, or just uh, uh, pleading with God, saying that you know, he doesn't hold back. He, de he proclaims the goodness of God. He declares it to people around him in the great assembly, but then asking for God to draw close to him um, because he, is, he, he trusts in him as his deliverer and his helper. Shall 
Should we turn now to our second reading, which is from the writer of the Hebrews, the letter of the Hebrews. And if you've ever read Hebrews, you'll find that um, in quite a few of the, of the middle chapters of Hebrews, um, uh, the writer of the Hebrews talks about the high priest Melchizedek. And uh, at the beginning of this chapter, he's been talking about that and about the way in which Gel Melchizedek was an example. And he talks in this section about Jesus being like Melchizedek and the ways in which um, we have a, a, a high priest in Jesus who, like Melchizedek, is there interceding for us. Even though Melchizedek was a, a priest on this earth, um, this is what the, the context of, of our reading is about. So um, the writer to the Hebrews goes on to say in verse 25 of chapter 7, therefore he is able to save us completely. That is the, the high priest who, who, who is like, like Melchizedek, but who is interceding for us. He's, he, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted about the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, since for our own sins, first for our own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men in their weakness. But the oath which came after the law appointed the son who has been made perfect forever. Now, the main point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in, that, in the sanctuary, the, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. And so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If he were here on earth, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest. For there are already priests who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy, a shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was, was warned when he was about to build the ta tabernacle. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But in fact, the ministry of Jesus, the ministry that Jesus has, has received is, a superior to, is superior to theirs as the covenant of which he was a mediator is superior to the old one. Since the new covenant is established on better terms. This is the word of the Lord. So the whole essence of that reading is taking the example of Melchizedek and also recounting the ways in which the high priests have uh, ministered in the tabernacle and made sacrifices for the people. He's making that comparison between um, those high priests who, if you like, showed the way, but, who Je but in Jesus, who, who, who is the perfect high priest and who has sacrificed himself so that no more sacrifices are need needed and in fact jesus that uh, great high priest who is in in the heavenly realms in the in the holy tabernacle is there interceding for us on our behalf he's paid paved the way he's paid the price and, and it's a wonderful picture there we have of of this um, um the replica on earth of the tabernacle which is now made perfect in heaven because christ the high priest is there in that um, holy tabernacle, which um, is, is there to, to purify all things, the holy of holies beyond all um, human understanding, but is there because Christ is there interceding for us. And that's a wonderful picture that we have. And it gives us our hope. That's why we as Christians put our trust in Jesus, because he is there at God right, God's right hand, interceding on our behalf. He has paid the price, he's made the way, and he is that perfect high priest who has paid the perfect sacrifice for us. So finally, let's look at our reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, and begin to read 
at verse 7 through to verse 12. This is when Jesus was on earth, the ways, the way in which the, the, um, his example or, or what he was doing was drawing crowds to him. So this is chapter 3, verses 7 to 12. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard about all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep the people from crowding him. For he had healed many, so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the impure spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, you are the son of God. But he gave them strict orders not to tell others about him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So again, in Jesus, when he walked this earth, we see that he was doing something that was so different from any other prophets or teachers around at that time. And all throughout Jesus' life, we see this example of purity and holiness. And, and with that came the ability to do incredible things. And again, as I said about that Hebrews reading, this is why we worship him. This is why we serve him. So let's move down in our night prayer order and we're going to come to a time of prayer. Perhaps first of all, we can give thanks for Jesus and for all, all that he's done for us. And also we can come with confidence knowing that he is that great high priest who is there, that uh, he is our prayers, that he is interceding for us. Do you ever think about that, that when you pray, Jesus is echoing your prayers into the heart of God? And that, to me, gives great confidence. So, Father God, we want to come before you tonight and we thank you that Jesus paid the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, and gave himself on the cross to bear our sins. We thank you that he is, because of that, uh, in the heavenly realms, he was raised from death to life and he was ascended into heaven and he is now at the, the very throne of God, interceding for us. And through him, we can come and stand in God's presence, knowing that the price, price has been pray, paid. We've been set free and we're able to rejoice in his goodness and his holiness. We're able to be the people he wants us to be. But Lord, we know that at times we do let him down. We do get things wrong. And we thank you, Lord, that we can say sorry to you and you forgive us and you cleanse us because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. So merciful and holy God, we thank you that you stand in the heavenly realms and you intercede on our behalf. And so with confidence, we bring our prayers to you this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we also want to continue to pray for our nation and our world as we journey through this pandemic. Father, we just ask that you would work alongside the skills uh, that you've given to the scientists and the medical profession, all those who have brought about these wonderful vaccines and all those who are caring in hospitals and care homes for people who are very poorly. We ask, Lord, that you would give us all the, the capacity to, to understand how this virus can be brought to an end. And Father, we pray that you would give us the patience and the resilience to continue to keep our safe distance and to enable us not to both pass on the virus, but also not to, to contract it. And Father, we ask that you would be especially close to those who are struggling with ill health at the moment and those who are fearful. Draw close to them. Give them your wholeness and your healing and give them the assurance of your presence, whatever they're facing and whatever they're feeling. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you're able to follow the prayers in the night prayer, the prayers at the end, we join in together with the prayer that begins, Merciful God. Merciful God, we entrust your unfailing and tender care this night, those who are ill or in pain knowing that whenever danger threatens or ever, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe, comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer that particularly prays for, for those who need God's uh, presence and perhaps his assurance of them at this time. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And also, finally, we pray for God's protection over us as we go to rest tonight and as we sleep. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it to the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell in this, dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, with confidence we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So in peace we will lie down and sleep. And we say together, if you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Now may the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me tonight. I pray that it's been a blessing for you as you've been brought into the presence of God. And may we continue to rest in his presence this night and in the day ahead. Amen. God bless you all. Good night. <laughs>